All right, so my name's Matt. Uh, I'm the director of engineering with One Globe. We're a small business consulting company. I'm gonna be talking to you a little about today about how we're using Komunda at FEMA. Uh, we're using Komunda as kind of the backbone and the process engine that does a large grants management modernization effort. I'll explain a little bit about what that means. It means a lot of different things or nothing, depending on who you're talking to. So moving right along. <coughs> Quick intro commercial type thing. Uh, I've been doing this for a while. Um, come under, or uh, One Globe. Uh, we've been around for uh, about, about 15 years, coming up pretty soon, uh, mostly doing IT system modernization, DevSecOps type stuff, cloud engineering, a lot of it or orbits around process automation. Okay. Most of what you're gonna see, um, you know, as you're, you're going through things from the federal government, it's somebody submits a thing, somebody reviews a thing, somebody gives thumbs up, thumbs down, and then somebody gets the thing that they asked for. Right. It could be grants, it could be identity management, it could be benefits, it could be whatever it is that they're, they're trying to do, similar. So a lot of it revolves around that. Uh, myself, I've been doing this for a while, uh, software development in particular, and then a lot of it, like I said, orbits around BPM stuff. Right? From a, a tool suite standpoint, used just about everything under the sun, IBM, Red Hat, Pega, Appian, et cetera, et cetera. Comunda, Activity, Alfresco, all under that umbrella. And that's me, slightly more hair. Okay, so let's talk about grants management real quick, right? From a, a real high level standpoint, you have different phases of a grants life cycle, okay? Really what it boils down to is kind of like I said before, where you've got a, at the high level, you've got some pre-award stuff. Somebody submits an application, they say, I want a grant, okay? It could be a grant for equipment, could be a grant for services, could be a grant for, for hiring people. It's essentially money to do a thing. Right. FEMA does a lot of grants. Um, you've got other folks at NIH, other areas of the federal government that do a lot of grants processing. At a high level, they follow similar life cycles. Okay. You've got a pre-award process where they apply, they evaluate things. You've got the award process where they actually obligate the money that the recipient is going to get. Uh, Post-award, when they're actually doing the thing that they got the money for. Um, it has a lot of reporting requirements, reporting not as in crystal reports or BI reports, reporting like book report. Tell me what you spent the money on, okay? So automating those types of things, automating payment requests, uh, changes to grants, amendments to grants, that's all part of the deal. Talking about closing out, uh, when you're done with it, you have to tell them, here's what I did. You have to give money back that you didn't spend. You don't get to keep it. Uh, and then post close out in terms of auditing, monitoring, uh, records retention, and those types of things. Which lends itself very nicely to process automation, because it is a process, right? So when we talk about the, the overall life cycle, if you were to draw it out in a diagram with sub-processes and that type of thing, it would look something similar along those lines, but the particular mission that we're trying to, to solve in this particular case, they have 45 plus grant programs across 11 or more different systems, depending on who's counting and who calls what a system versus a tool. Okay. So lots of different uh, needs and supported outcomes. Okay, some of these programs deal with, like I said, they're buying equipment, they're buying fire trucks, or they're buying uh, breathing apparatuses for firefighters. Some of it's service or project-based stuff. They're gonna go raise a bunch of properties up above a flood level. They're gonna go reinforce a wall. They're gonna get money for those types of things, and those are all grants, okay? Integration with internal and external systems. None of these things flow in isolation. Integration with finance systems, award management systems, things related to GSA, small business, housing administration, all come into play for the mission that we're trying to solve. Okay, so a lot of this is system and service integration stuff. A lot of it's human processing. Uh, and then it changes. Okay, this is for FEMA. So Puerto Rico gets, gets devastated. There's something new there that didn't exist in other scenarios because it's a unique situation. We need to be able to make sure that the process that we're following and the way that it's implemented and the data that it's collecting all can be morphed to be able to support that mission that is new, okay? It's not that it's here's one size fits all and everything fits into that bucket. It's a matter of making sure that the system really does support, play a supporting role and an enabling role in what people are trying to do day to day. So to reiterate, if we said, okay, here's a pre-award process Okay, from the system standpoint, like if we start the, the pre-award process part of the life cycle, okay, in certain scenarios and certain programs, it might be this, where I've got a multi-stage review through 
uh, initial review, an administrative review, finance, legal, everybody's got to go through and do their processing. Okay, that's fine, review it. Somebody gives thumbs up, thumbs down, they can kick it back. Somebody moves through, cascades. Eventually, somebody gets an email that says, hey, congratulations, you got a thing, right? which is nice. Or they might have a simple or automated process where it comes in, they evaluate in an automated fashion for eligibility. Right? Some of the grant programs that we deal with, it's an evaluation of factors that say you do or don't qualify for this, and then in a very streamlined fashion, somebody may verify that that was correct. Otherwise, you, you get the benefit you applied to. Both of those, from a conceptual and a system standpoint, are the same process. It's pre-award. Okay? We need to be able to say that for your program, from a configurability standpoint, do, do this one or do that one, and you need to be able to change it as you go. And by the way, from a data standpoint, even if you flow through the exact same process, your data could be completely different. It might have nothing to do with each other. Okay? You might still go through the same legal review. That's great. But what you are reviewing has nothing to do with the, those other people are reviewing. But it's the same process, which is neat from an engineering standpoint. Uh, but from an operational standpoint, poses some challenges. So what we have put together from a tactical uh, stack standpoint is very similar to what you've kind of heard from a narrative. Right? We've got containerized microservices, you know, 12 factor type pattern. Okay, Komunda really playing to the strengths of an embedded process engine. Like I mentioned, we have the external system integrations. We've got different uh, configuration based elements of the system to be able to facilitate different data over here from different data over there. Right? The way that we pull that off is by embedding Komunda in these different services. Deploy it on OpenShift inside uh, Docker containers, um, Spring Boot stuff. Uh, Komunda's got very solid integration from a Spring standpoint. If you've got a Spring Bean that you can expose, you can probably just use it. Right? There's some things that you need to, to put in place in terms of wiring, um, but it integrates very well through that. Uh, integrated and exposed through the uh, API gateway and security layers that we have for our system. Right? That part's just as easy as with anything else where Komunda supports those types of integrations. Um, the, the REST API that Komunda supports for integrating and interacting with all of the different process elements is very easily put behind any other sort of authentication mechanism or gateway. So that's what we did. Uh, and then it's running as a headless application with configurable user interfaces to meet the flexibility requirements so that we can pull off this process is similar but different from this other process. They want a different UI, great, that's fine. You want to collect the same data with a slightly different UI, okay, be difficult, whatever you want to do. Yeah, that's fine. Um, but that is a, a serious thing that we do need to support and it does do that from a flexibility standpoint really well. Uh, and that's a little diagram. Uh, so one of the things I want to talk about a little bit is the process of how we do that, right? And when we talk about how the API supports all of the engineering and operational aspects of not only the process lifecycle, but the engineering lifecycle, okay? Talking about some of the stuff that uh, Coemo does in terms of collaborative modeling and implementation and one of the first sections in that book, talking about how to get the whole team going through and doing some of the engineering work. Right? We have the whole team participating in all of this. Okay? You've got business users that might be able to provide some context, right? but in a vacuum, that's not going to work. You've got technical users that might be able to provide some implementation details, but in a vacuum, that's not going to work. So you've got to bring everybody together to get the whole team talking. Right? Developers can help polish things from a technical standpoint, and business users can help add context from a business standpoint. If you ask a business user to describe a process, you're going to get a totally, potentially different depiction of that process from the way it ends up getting implemented. So it's a, it's a helpful thing to have everybody working together as one whole team. We do CI/CD integration. Um, it's a business decision to make that jump from one process version to another. Okay. So in the demo that you saw earlier, that idea of migrating from a process version, that fits in very core in an aspect of CI/CD and DevSecOps and you know however you want to brand it. But at some point, somebody's going to put an MVP version of a process out the door, and at some point, somebody's going to enhance it, and you've got to be able to go from A to B. Okay, it works great. So it supports that type of operating model very well. Um, it lets you get out the door very quickly uh, and then upgrade it. We do that um, over the, 
the course of the, the past year um, based on the different automated deployments. We've had multiple hundreds of versions of new processes based on the different changes that we've put out there. Right? Again, whole team participates. So good, it's on there twice. <laughs> um, everybody all together, all at once, it's a collaborative thing. <laughs> Uh, I've seen it go off the rails many different times when they try to segment it out as a wall between business and tech. Um, we have everybody in the same boat. First thing we did was have everybody get the modeler, start working. We use that as kind of the backbone that everybody kind of nucleates around as we're working on the, the Agile stuff. Lessons learned. Uh, separation duties for system components, right? So that's a, that's a standard engineering type thing. Don't overload your services to take on workflow stuff and don't overload your workflow stuff to take on other system services. Okay, so it provides a lot of capability to integrate with other services through however you want to do it. Right? The Spring integration is there, so a lot of the Spring components and Spring Beans can be wired in from a process standpoint, support scripting, use it, delegate that stuff to where it belongs. This stuff scales incredibly well if you do it right. Don't work yourself into a hole just like anything else. Um, the REST API backed again to the notes about documentation, right? The, the thing that we see here is a, you know, put the architect hat on for a sec, people start to go, on the, go down the path of building an API for the system. First thing is go check and see if that's already built because it probably is. Okay, use the API that's out there. It does essentially everything you would need it to do based on the process primitives, which is a double-edged sword because it will do exactly what you need it to do or what you tell it to do. Okay, so you need to understand it, and that's where some of the stuff comes in from the enterprise standpoint. Right? Operationally, there's a lot of stuff that's in there that takes the burden off of the people and takes the risk off of pressing that button from an API standpoint. It's bundled already for you to do that stuff. Right? Configuration management and versioning. So I mentioned we have a few different versions, lots of different versions of processes that are out there which can be um, tricky to manage. Right. If you're dealing with your process versions in GitHub and you're trying to merge XML files and your people aren't great at merging XML files, stuff is going to get dropped. Right? So make sure that you're applying the right types of practices, get something in there that can help facilitate management and publication and shared authoring of processes. Right? It can really slow you down from an operational standpoint if you're trying to figure out where the hell did my task go because it's not there anymore because somebody put the wrong version of it out there. Right? And keep in mind operational support. Again, back to it doing exactly what you tell it to do. If you do not provide an exception handling route, you're not going to get one. Okay, so model it to make sure that your business process from an operational standpoint is also represented in the flow. Okay, build in those cases where it's got to go down an escalation path, build in those cases where you're, you're dependent on an external service that's not super duper reliable. Right, make sure you're building something in to make it easy for everybody to recover. It's always recoverable. Okay, it's always recoverable, everything's always there. It's just a matter of making your lives easier, making the ops folks' lives easier to make sure that that's doable and timely in painless fashion. Right? Thank you. <laughs>